It seems that every time I run out of energy and interest, I will return to the game where Accolade lacked energy and interest and talk once more about Les Manley, Search for the King. Les Manley Search for the King is a 1990 adventure game, a tepid little entry into the maybe I'll get to see boobs of narrative adventure games, pioneered by mostly spin-offs of the Leisure Suit Larry and Spellcasting franchise. This is one of those things that might be very hard for people on the modern internet to remember, but there was a time where pornography, or even titillating material, wasn't readily available everywhere all the time anytime you wanted it. And that meant that video games, which were otherwise like a $70 purchase, could sometimes lean on the till to get you to, you know, cash up for them by just, you know, implying, hey, you'll probably see some boobs in this. There was always a degree which was phrased as bawdy humor, but also, you know, it's not exactly a selling point otherwise. They're not very funny games. Les Manley didn't come from the dueling giants of Sierra and LucasArts, or any of their peripheral competitors. This game was made by Accolade. Now, there's some really novel history here, where the guy who made the game was Stephen Cartwright, who you might remember if you're a huge Atari 2600 nerd, but is also responsible for making the much more recent game, Dynadash, which Dynadash doesn't mean anything to me, but it's definitely something on the Wikipedia page that made a lot more money than Les Manley in Search for the King. The thing is, Accolade as a company was, when I was paying attention to it, one of the more soul light game studios. They were making the next sports game throughout the 1980s and were probably the first brand that ever really got going based on official branded tie-ins, even if it was things like golf. And I say that knowing full well that in the oeuvre of Accolade, they have Star Control 2, Warp Speed, Bubsy, and Eradicator. All games that I think of as worth talking about, but also mixed in with that classic and three games that were going in the same direction and split the cab fare, Accolade made a lot of crap. And I mean a lot of crap. Accolade were a company that were founded by spite. The law goes that Accolade, formed out of the leavings of Activision in an acrimonious way, named their company that way so that in all the official documentation that handled things alphabetically, they'd always appear near, but also ahead of Activision. Activision, you may remember, are one of many video game companies that's just plain fucking evil. And right now, they're trying to make themselves into an organ of Microsoft and promising that doing so will in fact be good for variety in the gaming landscape, and not at all further consolidation and monopolization of a fledgling art form that is already being smothered under the arse cheeks of awful billionaires. But don't let all that distract you from Accolade's own sins. They were really boringly petty. Anyway, Accolade made Les Manley and Search for the King as a synthesis of three of the hottest ideas in video gaming in 1990. Elvis Conspiracies, Pee Wee Herman, and Tits. Les Manley was conceived as a sort of character who could carry a franchise. <laughs> as a sort of nebbish loser nerd, someone the audience could relate to, who could solve problems in a highly technical and creative way, rather than applying direct force to it. He was a Roger Wilco, a Leisure Suit Larry, a Graham of Daventry, but exaggerated to be more of a dork, more embarrassingly pathetic. Basically, someone who could look at Guybrush Threeput and go, oh, I'm not one of the cool guys like him. And I have stuff, notes, about this game, about the ways it's ass and the way its puzzles are fantastically poorly put together. And, like, at one point, it does the Hugo's House of Horrors sin of making the puzzle about the game just straight up lying to you on the point of interface. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'll show you that sometime, maybe another time. All intermixed with that, maybe you'll see tit scenes that populate this game that's definitely horny, but definitely doesn't fuck. I could show you its place in the context of other narrative adventures. It came out in the same year as King's Quest V and The Secret of Monkey Island. I could talk about the way this story demeans women constantly in some sort of proto-incel way that honestly makes Larry Laffer look 
like kind of a much cooler guy and a little more feminist than he actually is. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because the original way I was planning on talking about this game was about how it was abandoned wear and how abandoned wear could be used as an insight into cultural windows that have since closed. How being able to freely access games from our own history, games that were no longer commercially costly, but also no longer commercially viable, was a good, and that we should be supporting Abandonware and archive sites. But then I found to my shock and surprise that Les Manley has been unabandoned. Someone got this game in a rights purchase, probably as part of a bundle, and said, you know what? I bet I can get a tenner for that. The thing is, fuck that. No, this game is not worth $10. Maintaining the museum of digital storage and software compatibilities that let us play this game should not be financed with on-the-spot payments of $10 as part of a capitalist exchange. I understand that GOG are doing a service that I am, yes, willing to pay for, but I cannot get my head around the idea that this game, this game, is going to be preserved through capitalism because the market spoke. The free market was given two Les Manley games, and he sank beneath the waves 30 years ago, in part because even by the standards of 1990, he sucked. I don't have a particularly ornate point here. It's a simple thought, a realization that while I may like it when GOG meant I could run Fallout on my netbook 10 years ago, the idea that stores are how we preserve other games means that things that are interesting to look at, where anyone being paid money for it, has nothing to do with the creation of it, is a fundamental inimical ill, and I heartily recommend that you watch a let's play of this terrible game to come to understand how it does things terribly, and that it's always ethical to emulate and pirate games. It's late, this game sucks, and this game should be being preserved for free for its people, and the work of preservation should be getting paid for its own sake. <laughs>